Hi, so I recently created my first Unity game uh, in 2D and I thought I'd share a quick tutorial. Um, I'm just going to quickly open up uh, a new project here, giving it a name. And you can see where the project folder is being put. I'm going to change the default to 2D and it's going to set up me with a blank project here. Um, so now we can explore the um, GUI a little bit in Unity and you can move those things around as you wish. Uh, this is the scene and you can see that when you put it on 2D it defaults to that 2D view from the camera um, but every uh, scene in Unity is still in fact 3D um, and you can use that in your 2D games and you use 3D sprites, uh, 3D um, objects and materials as well as 2D sprites. Um, so I'm just going to go through the camera a little bit here I'm going to change its size and uh, at the moment it's kind of arbitrary. Um, I want to just get, make it uh, not too big for the sprites that I'm going to import. And you can change the background if you have it on the skybox here so that you don't have to have a boring blue or a boring uh, grey as the background of your game um, before you put in sprites that is. So that's the main camera. It de that's uh, another default um, attribute that it adds in a game object. When you set up a new scene, you can um, always delete that and you have no game camera, uh, but of course it won't render anything without one. Um, so I'm just going to create a couple of folders in our asset folder here in our project. Um, I've got scripts, sprites and resources. and They've all got capitals at the beginning here, uh, scenes. Um, just a note, if you add uh, resources, um, anything you add to resources will be brought in to the game verbatim at runtime and won't actually be comp compiled. So that's great if you have um, lots of things like text files which um, you don't want to be compiled but um, you want to be able to change afterwards, for instance. And I've just made a new scene um, so I just clicked on save scene in the top file menu and then I gave it a name and added it and it created a new scene and I just moved it into the scenes folder there so I can keep track of them. So previously I made um, uh, with some friends a lot of sprites here and I'm just going to bring all these sprites into our scene here into our sprites folder and just drop and drag them all in. So you can see all our sprites have been added to the Unity Sprites folder. Um, when you click on any um, sprites or resources you'll have, uh, or any game objects for that matter, you'll have in the Spectre any properties that you can change and alter with those particular objects or resources. And you can change some of those things. Oh. Um, there's a couple of other um, add-ons which you can access in um, Unity Pro, which I currently do not possess. So I'm just going to um, start slicing our sprites here. So um, if I click on the man walk and then click on the sprite editor in the um, inspector there, you'll get the image brought up and a border box for the sprite for that image. So I've just moved it down to the one person moving. And if I wanted to click apply at the top right there now, I'd, I'll be setting my sprite as that first person there. What I want to do is I'm going to set my sprite mode to multiple and then it will automate the slicing of this um, sprite into several objects. And the first option is automatic and that will just give the smallest amount of white space. So compact your sprite. What I actually want is a uniform sprite so that you the center is always the same and the dimensions are always the same. So I'm just going to revert that quickly and I'm going to change the type to a grid. And you can see it's got uh, uh, sizes there, and I know that my my size is uh, forty. I think there you go, and my and you can see that they're now each individually um, 
sliced with the center in the right place. And I'm going to apply and move out of the sprite editor. And I'm going to do the same thing for the running animation. And slice. Okay, so now we can start creating um, new objects to add sprites to the scene. So if we want to add a background image, for instance, or the sky, uh, we can make a 2D um, sprite here, or we can make an empty object and add the sprite renderer component to it. And in the sprite renderer, we can choose a sprite by clicking on the circle to the right, and I've chosen the sky one. Um, you can add its uh, position in space using transform. And taking note of the size here, I'm just changing so that our quite small sprite is being um, manipulated to stretch across the whole scene here. Um, and as it's a matte color, that's not going to cause any pixelation. So I'm just going to move that out now using the the anchors on its corners um, and adjust the Y so it's dead center still. So you can always uh, refer back to the accuracy of the um, transform position if you find that things are slightly out. And I'm just going to change the size of my camera so that we fit the whole of the sky in. Now, um, I want to create a repeating ground pattern for our um, walking man to stand on. And I made a quad here, which is effectively a two triangular square, which is used in 3D. And um, there's a couple of ways of making repeating patterns. You can create a, a um, single sprite, and using a script, you can um, tell the sprite renderer to repeat the sprite that it's displaying. Uh, for ease of use and quickness, I'm just going to create this quad and create a new material. Um, add, um, change the sprite ground to material and its type, and then um, add the sprite to that material. And now in my quad, you see it has its new material and I can change that to my material I've just made there. And it's got a tiling attribute, so I'm just going to add some tiles to it. And there we have a, a reasonably functional uh, repeating pattern on a quad using a singular block sprite wrapped around a material and added using the uh, particle alpha blend mode. Um, so that it's not waiting for any light to hit it to to render it to the camera. And I'm just going to create a new uh, sprite here, I call it Man. And this is our Walking Man sprite. And you can see that because we uh, sliced up earlier, you have the option of choosing a particular slice. So I'm just going to, uh, you can either create a new 2D sprite, or you can actually drag the sprites onto the hierarchy there. And the hierarchy is pretty much all your objects currently in the game world. Um, and uh, like it says, the hierarchy actually displays them in order so that the camera is at the top and currently the man's at the bottom and they'll be rendered in that order uh, unless I've always specified. Um, so I'm just going to change the scale of our singular man here. Uh, so it's not too stretched or pixelated. Um, you can change the position and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some animation to our man so that we can actually use the sprites that we created earlier and animate through them. So components um, in the inspector act as pretty much all the elements of interaction to a game object and there's some predefined ones in Unity um, such as the sprite render transform we've been using, animator um, but our scripts that we create are also components and um, you can search for any particular script or you can browse through them by clicking on the add component. So I've just added the 
uh, animator and the animation components to our man here. And the animator allows us to move um, between uh, animations and the animation uh, component allows us to create them for this object. So I'm going to the animation window, clicked on add um, animation and I'm going to name it in a new folder, uh, man walk, and click save. So we've got this animation and we can choose from um, different components to change um, about our, our man and as the sprite is hooked into the sprite renderer I'm going to change the sprite um, component and the particular sprite is using at any point in time. And here, just like Flash or Premiere or any um, of those kind of Adobe project products, with a timeline we can see that um, record on the left is recording and anything we move or change now um, where the, the line is will create a new keyframe for that particular um, place. So I've just moved it um, along a bit and I've then gone to the sprite editor and changed the sprite. I'm going to do that again and choose the third sprite. And we can continue doing this for all the different sprites. Or alternatively, you, we can shift and select all of the sprites and add them sequentially into the timeline. You could always you could do this with not just sprites but also anything else, any other components that you have. So transform, so we can move, create an animation to move the um, player up and down, left and right, bobbing, um, and we can add curves and or keyframes. So I'm just going to bunch these all up together um, for ease of use. Drag them to the beginning, and then you see where it says samples on the left. If you change the samples. Um, that's effectively your frames per second. So press play and you can see that we're walking. I'm just going to decrease that slightly so you get this more stop frame animation approach. And we can see there's a bit of a stumble at the end, so I think there's a repeated frame there. I'm just going to delete that frame and see if that helps. Okay, so that's that's a complete loop, that one. So if you press play, you'll see it automatically takes the animation that player has and um, has it as default. You see where it says set as default, it's greyed out, and that's because the, we've got one animation and it's being played automatically. And that's not necessarily what we want, we might want a resting state. so. In the animator window, we can uh, create a new state which is empty, give that a title, and we can either add a new animation to that, or we can just use it as an empty animation and have that as our idle state. So you see that there's motion, man walk, and then motion none on our idle. Um, and we're going to connect them together so that we can move from idle to man walk animation and back again by right clicking the um, different animations and clicking create transition. Um, I'm also going to make a parameter here at the bottom um, and I'm going to say walk and that's a boolean so that's a true or false parameter for the animator. So what we can do later on is we can add a script that says when this player, uh, when the player clicks right, um, we'll set the walk uh, boolean to true, and that will trigger the transition between idle to man walk. And we click on the other transition between man walk to idle, and then we'll just set the condition for walk to be false. So we have a complete circuit um, of if the walk is true, we'll move between to the animation and if it's false we'll move back to idle. There you go.
So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a, um, a script so that we can make this happen with um, our controller or some sort of input so we can actually make our, our man animate using the keypads. And to do that we add a new component to our man and then we click um, create new component and we add um, a arbitrary name for the component script. I'm going to call it animate man and double clicking that we will bring up mono develop. So in mono develop um, each it sets up a script automatically for you which just includes the name of the, the script you've just added so the class name is animate man and it also adds the start and update functions and basically um, everything that it does once the beginning of waking up or starting the game happens in the start function and everything that which continuously happens um, possibly 60 frames per second happens the update function and I'm just going to create a uh, I'm just going to paste in our walk functions here so we have this class animate man we have a public boolean which is walk just to show whether the walking is happening or not um, we've got this animator component and in the start function we've said um, animate so I've just I've gone to the game object and got the component and added it to animate man comp so that we can use that later and in the update function is constantly checking to see if the right key is pressed the right button is pressed and if so it will set the boolean on the uh, animate on the um, animate component to true so I kind of brushed over some scripting there um, that was in C sharp um, but we'll do a little bit more scripting in a second um, to get a better feel for it so we've got our character and we've got our floor and uh, we want to make the character kind of um, have some sort of gravity so for all the gravity in 2D all the um, physics we have physics 2D and we want to give our man a box collider so that the physics engine knows if it's hitting something and we can change the size of the box using the um, box collider size there um, and you can add a rigid body and by giving an object a rigid body we can uh, effectively give the object mass and gravity in doing so so by giving our little man our rigid body he will fall in the direction of gravity which is default to um, down in unity and that can be set differently and um, he will keep falling forever so what we do need to do now is we need to create a floor for the man to stand on when he's falling so I'm just going to choose an arbitrary um, sprite here and just for reference and I'm going to add that to the scene and make that bit again so we can see where it is um, and then this is going to act as our floor effectively so if something for the man to stand on we could use our um, our repeating pattern floor but uh, annoyingly the um, 3D object that that is um, won't react with our 2D objects so I've just created a 2D sprite for our 2D uh, man to stand on so I've put it behind there in the layers I've added a box glider and now it doesn't need a rigid body if we added a rigid body to it it would do the same as the man and it would have gravity and thus fall from the scene Let's just press play now and hopefully our man will fall and land on what looks like effectively a solid repeating floor. So I'm just going to move him up slightly so that we can see him fall. There you go and next we can make him jump. 
so to our Animate Man script, I've just added a few extra things. Mainly, if you press the up button, we add um, some energy effectively to our rigid body 2D component. Um, and you can see that in action there. So it's just pressing right and then press up and he jumps. Um, there is other ways to move sprites in 2D, um, like transformation, um, changing the transform position. Um, and you can see here I've just added if input key up, then our current game object, rigid uh, body 2, so that's our rigid body component, add force, and I've added a certain amount of force in the y direction. Okay, lastly for this particular tutorial, we're going to add some text. We're going to import some XML text to the game, and we can add equally normal text files, HTML files, um, JSON files. Um, I'm going to choose XML in this instance, as um, I learned recently how to do this. So I'm going to create a new game object. I call it text and I've added a new script and I've called that script XML text importer. Um, I've added, I've, so I dropped and dragged a XML file into our resources folder and that's what's in our XML file there. And just to display what we, um, that we have succeeded in importing the text, um, I've put a little debug to say that we've imported two text objects um, into our script and that prints out the console so this is our script. You should see at the top, right at the top, I've added a couple new using um, uh, libraries there, system collections generic, so that we can use a list, and the system's XML, so we can use this XML document object. And we've made a XML text asset public, um, and a list public, so we can add things in Unity to those two variables there. So what we're effectively doing in this script, as you can see it only has the start function, as we only want to do this once, is we take our text file uh, object, which we made public, we load in XML file, which is XML file.txt. Uh, every uh, text object that gets brought into Unity becomes a text object, or a uh, text asset. And then for that XML text, we're going to find the first child of it and for each every other child in it and add that to our list and increment through until there isn't any anymore. And then we'll log how many objects we have in our list and then we'll print out the first number of our list. So here we go. If you press play, we can see that the bottom of the console, it says imported one text object and has printed out what that text object is. We could add more text to our XML file. And it's going to copy and paste some in there and you can see some text. We could also grab the information about that node as well. Um, so I hope this has been useful and um, hope to do a couple more tutorials soon. Thanks.